Hello and welcome to the second vehicle lightweighting conference brought to you by Autocar Professional. Now, as we know, making vehicle lighters has been a long-standing goal of the auto industry because of the obvious advantages of weight reduction, which brings in terms of fuel efficiency, less, and, uh, less wear and tear and increase life and lower emission. And it's this last point, which is lower emissions, that has made the need for lightweighting especially critical in the present scenario where industries have strict goals of decarbonization and net zero targets. We have a power pack session over the next two days with industry experts sharing their thoughts on the new technologies and innovations uh, in this field of lightweighting. And to kick off the inaugural session, it is our pleasure to invite the country managing director and CEO of Renault India, Venkat Raman Mamelapale, to give us the keynote address. Over to you, Mr. Mamelapale. Thank you, Hormas. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, all. Today's world is more concerned and should be for all reasons on environment and the social responsibility. Companies moving towards decarbonization and net zero targets, as Hormas just said, it's become important and it has become the main goal for every organization who is running the business and as well as to keep up the society which they are living in together. All across industry, we are trying to optimize our natural resources and as well as well-being of humanity. And it is very important that humanity's health is our business to continue grow and survive as well as keep everything in order as we progress as a humanity on this planet. Based on this, there is something called ESG framework, uh, which is a key to every corporate, which is working and doing, conducting their business. ESG is basically environment, social, and governance. Environment, obviously, uh, we have to take care of environment where we are working, where we are living, and to keep ourselves in a good condition for us as well as our future generation as we move ahead. Social, we have to take care of shareholders, stakeholders, community, and the supply chain globally, which we are using and in a proper order. Governance is the management who is responsible for the business. Uh, as management, we are responsible to take care of environment and the social governance, which is necessary. Put these into KPIs and tracking as well. The most important thing is social responsibility, which is also governed by CSR in various corporations. And health and safety is critical in the given context with a lot of things which we saw in the past couple of years, whether it is COVID or any other issue related to health and safety. And this is the framework with ESG is formulated. Meanwhile, as it goes, in 2015, UN made 17 goals and actually 193 countries got engaged to reach the goals by 2030, which is Sustainable Development Goals, which is also called SDG. And this has become very critical for every corporate. It is being tracked. There are nations who are committed to it. As I said, 193 countries are committed to this uh, SDG. And every organization, every country is working towards this. With this background, let us dwell into lightweighting concept and more focus on automotive as vehicular emission is agreed to be one of the major factor of pollution. First, let's all understand and shift our paradigm on lightweighting. It's very important and I want to be very specific. I'll go a little more detail in future as we speak. Lightweight means efficiency, strong, reliable, and a better performance, not otherwise. In the olden days, we had been thinking that Light weighting means weak and it is not safe, but it's not the case in the new generation as we move ahead as the automotive evolution is taking place. Today, light weighting as a whole concept towards future efficient mobility solutions, doing more with less light is right. There are a lot of acronyms which people are using. I would like to share some of the slides which will detail more on light weighting. So can I have the presentation, please? See, this uh, shows the benefits of light weighting. And what is important here, it starts at the design stage. It's not that uh, it's done, the car is done, and then we proceed with light weighting. It's done right at the design stage. 
and how we optimize what are the levers that's one which i'm going to touch about but before that let me change the paradigm by stating that lightweighting means fuel economy less co2 which is again related to emissions price advantage there is price advantage to is cost of ownership when we have some maintenance or something happens it's easy and less cost for us to maintain it or repair it performance is much better when i say performance lightweight takes lesser braking efficiencies i mean you don't need to put a lot of load on your engines the smaller engine can give you better efficiency and more space in storage when you have less weight you can put more load into the car space so that's the whole uh, benefits which we get on lightweight and the way we have to optimize at the design stage obviously is the dimensions material the second most important thing powertrain optimization as i just said you don't need big engines because higher mass to move you need bigger engines lighter the weight you can move with the smaller engines which are more efficient whether it's on fuel economy or on emissions or else uh, in maintenance as well as on the cost and packaging optimization when you have lightweight for the global supply chain it will be much easier you don't overload uh, on your trucks you do optimization means you have a parallel governance on the emissions and then process optimization as you use different materials you have a lot of process optimization which we can do uh, instead of putting heavy hammers and presses you can go for a smaller machines more efficient machines more efficient process high speed production all this can be done product definition also can be optimized whether it is seats which we will talk about it in a couple of slides from now but a lot of process optimization also takes place which means we spend less energy in processing those material and the way we take out the product for the final uh, assembly as well as the vehicle can we go to the next slide i'm just talking about the quid as an example being reno quid uh, is our product so i want to just put some perspective to this less weight for its size in the whole market at the point of time when we launched quid if you see the overall length of the car versus the weight quid was the best and this proves that less weight doesn't compromise on size it definitely gets you size even with the less of weight how do we achieve this less of weight is the one we will further more elaborate fuel efficiency it's very critical again in india we know our fuel prices the way they are fluctuating and always on the higher side and less of weight means smaller engines better efficiency of the engines and more fuel economy so again if you see the competition which we have narrated as c2 c3 c1 i didn't want to put the names so with respect to them the quid being lightweight having a very high fuel efficiency is the second um, box which is shown on the right and more exterior volume with less weight again uh, if you see the space which we spoke about a few minutes back that le less weight can give you more space because you don't occupy large spaces and you can economize on the volume which is available in the car so that is the second point which we are trying to establish and power to weight ratio if you see the last box on the right bottom which shows the uh, description of the weight versus the power the light, lesser the uh, length of the vehicle or more length of the vehicle and the power you optimize is the best way to go about so these are the four important criteria which is a snapshot i'm not going to elaborate more but just showing a snapshot that how uh, we have the advantage on light weighting and li not only light weighting but also using the space as an economy because the real estate is fixed and we got to use very very economically and still move at a much faster pace giving satisfaction to the customers in all aspects whether it is fuel efficiency whether it is the safety factor and other uh, related satisfactions of the customer so all this can be achieved with less weight and giving them more can we go to the next slide these are a few examples which shows which is a global trend it is not specific to quid though it is being adapted in reno globally and there's one good example that we had one model in the olden days which we used to make uh, which had the body upper structure of uh, 134 kilos and we got it down to 89 kilos 
and we used various types of steel. In those days, we started off with the tailor welded blanks where you're using different thickness of metals and trying to weld them and then blank them and then shape them up and then go for advanced high tensile steels, ultra high tensile, which is again available easily nowadays in the marketplace. And we have used aluminum sheets and magnesium material. Uh, for example, uh, if you see quid steering wheel has magnesium inside. So it reduces the weight, it increases the efficiency, and as well as the cast aluminum, which is again a trend. Most of us are using it, and then followed by plastics. There are various types of plastics, and whether it's fiber reinforced plastics or sheet molded compounds or thermosetting plastics are also being used. So if you see the change of 134 kilos to 89 kilos on the upper structure, it's a significant improvement, which actually adds up to the vehicle performance as well as loading the engine reduces drastically. Can we go to the next slide? This is the opening panels, which is on the side body outer as well as the doors. Uh, similarly, it's the same, same example coming out of one of the car. From 111 kilos, we went to 61 kilos. It's almost 50%. And this is not that easy because it has to have take the side crashes. It has to have the safety as well as we have to reduce weight. And these are the ones exercises. Again, we are talking about steel, aluminum, plastics, which is getting added to it. And in some cases, we also used perforated steel for making the side inners or body inners or door inners so that we can reduce the weight and still keep the strength of the uh, metal as is. So these are the few examples. As we move ahead, I'll also talk about the interiors. I, uh, I'm not sure if you would have read in many of the uh, newspaper articles. Can we go to the next slide, please? Yeah. Uh, where people are using natural products, natural material, whether it's coir or uh, banana leaves and so on and so forth. And here are some examples where we are also trying to do on insulations, uh, especially on insulation, we are using cardboard, not the normal cardboard, which we are talking about, or high absorbent polyurethane, as well as light non oven carpets for the underflow and which also helps us in NVH significantly and parcel shelf which goes behind the uh, seat uh, it is also used through natural fabrics or natural material and this is giving us a significant definitely we will have weight reduction but yes there is little bit of cost associated to this but overall we are trying to balance between the weight and the cost Lightweight doesn't mean that it is expensive. Again, this is one more paradigm which we all have to understand and shift from them that lightweight also gets us cost benefits. In the initial stages, when we were nascent in the automotive industry, this was the thing. Yeah, lightweight was expensive because people were switching to aluminum. But now as we progress, there are a lot of new material uh, which are coming up, which are very natural and as well as not very expensive. It doesn't mean that they are cheap, but however, they are cost competitive, in my opinion. And similarly, in instrument panels, we are using microfoam injection. And uh, if you see uh, most of the uh, instrument panels, which you will see in future coming up, will all get into the microfoaming injection molding consoles. And which is a key. It's not only aesthetically, it is giving a good looks, but also reduces weight significantly and adds a lot of strength. And natural fiber, Glass fiber reinforced thermoplast, which is again a game changer, and it has been in use for now a decade, and this is more evolving. And as we see that uh, in India also, we have started using it, and we'll continue to see how best we can adapt these materials as we move ahead. And very importantly, on the CT, glass fiber reinforced thermoplastic is call of the game. Uh, not many are using it as yet. The high-end cars are currently are using it, but this is the future for lightweighting on seats. Seats is one of the heaviest uh, component, which we all uh, should be concerned and work on that to make sure that we reduce the weight substantially. Then comes exterior. I'm not going to talk too much about exteriors. There are a lot of such actions which we are all taking together. Uh, can we go to the next slide? Uh, so integral microfoaming, injection molding to a conventional injection molding. These are the things which we are trying to evaluate and see how well we can balance the weight to the cost ratio. 
and this is a trend which is being followed across automotive industry and we will continue to do so and what is very important and critical is it's not only now we are talking about being green we are talking about pollution emissions and so on and so forth but it is also safety so this new lightweight material which we just spoke is also giving enough strength and increasing the safety of many of our cars and you can see that there are three star rating gn cap five star rating these all can be achieved even with these lightweight materials as we progress further and as reno globally we are working on this direction along with our alliance partner and we are moving in this direction even the car new car generation which we are bringing in india we will be using these lightweight materials and more especially this is critical at this point of time as uh, we are all going towards ev and you know the battery is the most expensive commodity and we want long range of mileage distance to be traveled on the battery and the best solution for that is the lightweight material which we should be using on the vehicles which enables the uh, the battery loading will be reduced and we will have a long miles to go and this the second thing and foremost thing and moving ahead beyond this is even reducing the weight of the batteries is also call of the day there are a lot of material which is under research i'm sure that the next generation of cars you will see this coming up and i'm i'm very sure that we all will be together working on this lightweight materials very seriously moving forward and it would be very critical for all of us to make sure that we keep our environment as safe green and leave the planet as is to our future so with that i let hormas uh, take over uh, thank you very much uh, mr mamala played really very interesting and you know a couple of points which i wanted to bring up or one key point you raise the issue of uh, lightweight materials not being so expensive i mean you know in, in in the indian context uh, you know how cost sensitive the indian market is especially at the lower end you know uh, quid is one example of where you really had to fight uh, work under a lot of cost constraints do you think it's still a challenge because while you said it's not that expensive it's still not cheap uh, that was one question is that uh, you know light weighting does it still come at a cost which in the indian context can be a challenge and the second question is you know to make it on scale certain materials are very difficult to make at a certain level of scale which again limits uh, their uh, kind of true potential okay for mars it's all matter of evolution and time and volumes okay and if you see the lightweight material which we had been talking about is once upon a time we were in a paradigm of using instead of steel aluminum okay and aluminum was definitely expensive then but using aluminum appropriately where it needs to be used and then balance the whole equation makes a lot of sense if you see one of the car which we have made i can't give the example now because it's still not launched we are using perforated aluminum sheets okay so you are reducing the weight aluminum is fully re recyclable so and you, have, you you still have the stiffness as well you've not compromised exactly you are not compromising on the stiffness because it's all in the matter of design how you adapt and how you bring about the strength and still reduce the weight and optimize the cost so instead of using high tensile steel you can always use different material and try to, i'm not saying it will be as cheap or as cost as the steel is but there are adaptations which you can do it to minimize the impact of the cost and still get you a better strength better reliability longevity is more critical and the efficiency for the owner who is buying the car the cost of ownership reduces drastically so what you're saying is over the life cycle the initial cost might be compensated by the lower running cost uh, which the lightweight material brings exactly so it is acquisition cost versus the running cost so that's the balance which we all have to strike upon and for a customer who can understand this will definitely appreciate this it's not that 1 kg of steel is equal to 1 kg of aluminum so you've got to see that 1 kg of steel is definitely equal to 304 350 grams of aluminum so we have to see how we can make the same part at this aluminum by weight and cost and not necessarily they are equal but you got to balance this 
right and you know the other question was on scale you know some of these materials may be a challenge on scale i mean look everyone is so familiar with steel uh, you have these massive press shops just churning out uh, you know panels at a, at a very fast rate aluminium uh, you know a, a deep draw can be a bit of an issue so do you think uh, you know even uh, producing some of these lightweight components at scale is also a challenge it, it might be a challenge today hormas given the situation but definitely as we evolve there will be some process which we all will come out with and make sure that we meet our demands right. and as i keep saying that demand is a mother of invention so they i'm talking about banana leaves coils those type of things uh, making parts out of it is also not a high production item right so there right. are some processes which we will evolve there are some researches being done there are some implementations already being taking place probably you will see in the generation of ev cars which are going to come in near future all the ev cars have to have to work on the light weighting necessarily otherwise we will not be able to sustain the battery cost weight and the mileage which we need for Right. So, uh, Mr. Mamal, Mamal, Apple, a lot of questions coming in. Before I let you go, I just wanted to answer maybe one or two very quickly. Sure. We've got Mr. Shripar Tokekar who's asking, how do you see the role of CAE or computer-aided engineering in light weighting? Definitely. As I said, it starts with design. Okay. The whole thing is not that you make a car and then try to light weight it. It has to start with, with the design. And not only CAE or CAD, or, but it has to come with artificial intelligence to see how well the strengths of the metal material light weighting can help us and which is already in practice by the way it's nothing new it's already in practice people are using it in europe for sure it is us in india that we have to evolve and adapt these and we are not late actually we are on track and we should be able to do this as quickly as possible and definitely artificial intelligence will play along with uh, cad and other softwares Right. And just one last question from Sanjay Kumar. His concern is side door panels, the lightweight, uh, will it lead to poor, for, poor, poor performance and side impact uh, scenario? You know, the uh, door panels are of uh, less stiffness, but I, I think you in a way answered that. But if you just want to quickly touch upon that, that light doesn't necessarily mean weak. Yeah, I, I probably missed my statement on that. Uh, side crash is very critical for side outer uh, panels and we are we have worked on this and i'm sure that we have achieved the necessary results and if you know quit we already got the g and cab rating uh, better and we are improving further on the driver and this is because not that we have used lightweight material we have used the lightweight material appropriately whether it is stellar welded blanks or by strengthening, ribbing them or using other sandwich material, we have we can definitely strengthen and get the required desired results on the crash. Right. Well, uh, uh, we've got lots more questions, but I think we have, we've run out of time. And uh, really, I think, uh, uh, you know, Mr. Mamal Apale, we had a lot of interest from the audience. Questions have just been uh, pouring in. Clearly, you know, it's been a fasc fascinating uh, presentation, a great kickoff to this section. Clearly, a lot of advantages uh, in light weighting, a lot of opportunities. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, that is the way to go. I think, uh, you know, uh, making vehicles lighter, there's only benefits to that. Uh, and a lot of uh, innovation and technologies uh, which you have, uh, you know, really uh, highlighted. Uh, and and uh, I think this is the way forward for the industry. With that, I would like to thank you very much uh, for, you know, kicking off our session and uh, really appreciate uh, you sharing your, your thoughts and, and views with us. Thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Thank Mark. you, Hormas, for having me.